Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you another one of my League games from the War of the Ring 2022 League. And before I get into the game, I just want to remind everyone who is watching this video today on the day it releases that you still have time to sign up for the free uh, annual War of the Ring tournament. And there are a lot of people who are playing in it, it should be a lot of fun, and beginners are welcome. There's a best rookie prize and it should it should be a lot of fun so I'll include a link to the sign up in the description of the video all right so in this game my opponent is Treebeard's Folly and they are playing Shadow and I am playing Free People and you can see my opening draw obviously Wizard Staff is great for me especially even with a Palantir to play it with but I will note that my opponent allocated zero eyes and rolled zero eyes. And so I have several, uh, I had an opportunity to roll more character dice and move even faster. So it's a little risky to allocate zero eyes on turn one, but you know, the chances of you rolling zero additional eyes and then your opponent also rolling very few character, uh, I mean rolling a lot of character dice, those two things combined are relatively low probability, so I can see why people might allocate zero eyes turn one. I, I tend to allocate one eye on turn one, even though I don't have to, because I think sometimes I would rather have a few extra eyes than zero eyes, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you think it's better to allocate zero eyes on turn one as shadow, or do you usually do one eye or even more? Um, leave your comments on that below. I'm curious to hear what people think. All right, but obviously I'm very happy to see wizard staff and um, no eyes. And even though my opponent allocated no eyes, they still only rolled one muster. So they're not even gonna get Saruman round one. So this is a very, I would say, quite lucky start for me. All right, my opponent gets armies moving and they, jump off right away to um, move towards Lorien. And I think that, you know, that's a reasonable plan. They're gonna get Sauron to war and then attack early. I don't, I don't think that's crazy, but it's a little surprising to me that with this Palantir die, they didn't play Orcs Multiplying again before moving out of Dol Guldur. So if you happen to get an early mustering card with Sauron and you're planning on going for an early attack, um, you know, why not get those three extra orcs to come with you? All right, so uh, I pass, that's fine. And my opponent gets their um, gets their armies organized the way they want. We undo it for a second because they want to move a single regular from Moria to Dimrel Dale. I think that's okay. Um, you know, if you're putting the elves to war, it's nice to leave, you know, I guess a, a regular in Moria. That doesn't, that's not so crazy to me, but, um, I would just, I, I think I would have just rather have the three extra regulars from Orcs Multiplying again. So, okay. Um, so they uh, get Sauron to war, and then I play Wizard Staff before moving. In, uh, there's no way that my opponent can hit me. Um, so I, it doesn't really matter the ordering, but it's just good practice to use your Palantir dice before you move the Fellowship if Gandalf is guide because then you get to use Gandalf's guide ability to draw an extra card. So I draw Elven Rope. I'm very happy to see more playable cards so that next round, if I get more um, Palantirs, I'll be able to continue to cycle cards with Gandalf. Okay, my opponent draws a card here. And okay, so if your plan was to draw a card with that Palantir, okay, I get it, but maybe do that before doing all this movement? I don't know, it's 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 not bad. Okay, so I go ahead and use a army movement because they're relatively rare. It's only one out of six sides that has an army movement. And while I have it, I want to get my units into uh, Westham Net. Um, maybe it would be better to muster somewhere. I mean, muster somebody towards war, but um, I decided I wanted to use the the army muster there. My plan, I believe, is to use a ring to move a second time, guaranteed. All right, I do use a ring here, guaranteed, and um, 
the fellowship obviously is safe because there are no eyes in the pool. And if you can move twice with the fellowship on turn one, then your third movement is, uh, which will happen at the start of round two, uh, is more safe. It'll only be on sixes, and therefore maybe you'll make it past Moria. All right, so um, my opponent attacks into Lorien with this relatively, in my mind, relatively weak army against Lorien, um, but they are trying to uh, make some progress and whittle it down and then get the elves to war so that they can get an early Witch King. All right. Um, when you see your opponent play a strategy card, often they will increase the um, the combat value, the, the chance to hit on a combat roll, and therefore I played advantageous position hoping that it canceled out their card. As it turns out, it didn't, um, but that's why I played Book of Mazar Bowl there. Um, obviously it's nice to get Dwarves to War, but I feel like uh, Fellowship is going to make good progress, hopefully, this game. We'll see. Um, Okay, so what happened here was I got uh, I got two hits and my opponent got two hits and that's relevant for Great Host. And so the attacker needs to take casualties first and that's gonna matter because if I reduce this uh, these two elites into two regulars, then I'll have three units and if my opponent loses two regulars, they won't have enough to trigger Great Host. So effectively, they have to lose the Elite, and then at that point, I um, go ahead and just use, use my, lose my Elite because there's no way to avoid Great Host. That's what happened there. All right, so my opponent did not take Lorien, but they did whittle it down, and next round they should be able to get a turn two Witch King, which is obviously good. I top deck Celeborn's Galadriel. So that is just ridiculously lucky of me. There was literally one out of 23 chance of drawing that card right there. Um, just pure luck, hard of the cards. Uh, you know, sometimes you get lucky and um, that's how it goes. So I draw again, I mean, look at this. This is just a beautiful roll. Um, a beautiful roll because I have plenty of cards to play with Gandalf and and then I'm going to move a couple times and it's going to be amazing. So I get Celeborn's Galadrium. I apologize to my opponent because that's just ridiculous luck and then I draw two cards happy to see Dan Ironfoot's guard um, and happy to see scouts. That can be very useful. Alright so my opponent attacks Lorien again. They don't play a card um, yeah, that makes sense. They actually did not get any characters, so character dice, so they can't actually even move Nazgul around. Um, I guess they're attacking it because they just want to get the elves to war. So that's the plan. They get no hits. I get no hits, um, but elves are now at war. And um, they get Isengard toward war. I move once here because I know that um, I can't lose Gandalf because I'll use Wizard Staff if I get hit, um, but my opponent misses. They get Saruman, that makes sense, and now I move again. This time they, they miss again. So I've managed to do four movements completely safe, and um, then I played Dan Ironfoot's guard here. I mean, I could play Elven Rope, but I'm feeling fine about the Fellowship right now, and I'd rather cycle into more strategy cards so that I can continue to reinforce all the places that need to be reinforced. So that's why I'm choosing that. A power to great, obviously useful. That will slow down the attack against Lorien even more. And my opponent gets the Witch King. All right. Happy to see Cairdon's ships, Mithrocoat and Sting, obviously very powerful also. And um, things are going pretty well for the Fellowship. I think about declaring the Fellowship. Uh, I think I decide not to because I think it's relatively unlikely they're going to get revealed because I have I have Wizard Staff, I think is what I'm thinking here. Um, and I'm not too worried about the extra 
tile from Moria. Um, yeah, okay. So my opponent rolls one extra eye. I get just, again, a beautiful roll here, two movement and a will of the west. I just, I can do everything that I want to do. My opponent misses. They play Pits of Mordor. That's interesting. I, um, yeah, what else could they do? What about, what about uh, New Power is Rising? I guess they're just buffing up, uh, buffing up and then preparing to go to Lorien with that. That makes sense. All right, I move again. This time I get hit. They accidentally draw a tile, but clearly I'm going to use Wizard Staff, and they're like, yes, of course you're going to use Wizard Staff, so that's fine. So we, we take that back, and the tile is not drawn. I've managed to move six times, not be revealed at all. And now they play Warm of Sorrow and Toil, which is certainly the right timing for it, because um, now I can start to lose companions. And, um, you know, they're going to whittle away my character cards. I'm not too worried about it, because uh, the Fellowship is in such good condition. I mean, six movements no damage is uh, great. So, you know, it can go downhill, but I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, um, my opponent, uh, I only have four dice though, four dice to nine. So, all right, um, let's see. I'm not sure what I'm thinking about here. They draw, they draw a card, that's fine. Maybe just play New Power is Rising? I guess you can use the Muster to do that. I would be inclined to use this Muster to get the Southrons and Easterlings toward war. Um, but yeah, maybe not. It's, it's good to draw cards too. All right, I recruit into the Woodland Realm because I see that this army is coming, coming north, so I want to be prepared for it. And um, I... What do I do there? Right, so I use that Will of the West as an army movement because I have um, I have scouts in hand and I wanted to get Helm's Deep ready. Now, I don't know, there were a lot of things I could have played there. I could have played a power too great. Um, I see that my opponent only has a monster here. They do have a ring, so maybe they're gonna attack. I don't know. Um, I think because there was a chance that they could use that, use the ring, I re and I have scouts, I really wanted to get this regular into Old Forest Road. Um, I guess the other thing I considered was um, instead of mustering into Woodland Realm uh, and using this army muster with the, using the Will of the West to army muster, I could have used a ring again to move the fellowship with the army muster and then try and lose Gandalf and bring Gandalf back on turn three. So that is a certainly a valid plan. I think that um, it felt to me like while I have the chance to defend my strongholds, that's gonna slow down. Um, that's gonna slow down to shadow more and I'm willing to, um, I, I would rather hang on to a, another ring. So I think that was my thinking. I'm curious what you would, would have done there. Would you have tried to get Gandalf move another time? So, okay, now my opponent plays New Powers Rising. Obviously, that's good. All right, I have a bunch of extra cards. Very happy to see Aomer. That's a great mustering card. I can put, put it right into Helm's Deep. And um, I, I'm leaning towards losing character cards now because um, because of Warm of Sorrow and Toil. Um, I get rid of Elephant Rope, May maybe it's worth holding on to it, um, because that's something I really could play before um, it gets lost to Warm of Sorrow and Toil. So, I don't know, maybe that's a mistake. All right, my opponent allocates one eye, rolls no more, and then I get no movement. So obviously that is not good, especially when there's only one eye. You want to keep moving with the Fellowship. So, you know, I can feel thankful that uh, Gandalf is still guide. I can cycle these Palantirs pretty well, um, you know, but that's, 
not good. Um, okay, I go ahead and start with Aomer. It's a little weird. I I feel like why not start with start with um, Power Too Great. Oh, I say that. Wait, and then I realize I made a mistake, but it's too late because I already drew cards in the Citadel. Fine. Hopefully my opponent won't attack Lorian right here. Um, so my opponent. Uh, attacks Old Forest Road. They don't play a card, and then of course I use Scouts. So I get Woodland Realm into a good position. I use my Mustering to get Woodland Realm fully fully occupied. Three elites, two regulars. That's a nice. It's very rare you see Woodland Realm that strong. Um, so I feel satisfied that they got into good position. And my opponent brings some armies around. They take Carrick and bring some units to Gap of Rohan. And now is where I play Power Too Great. Um, obviously I meant to play that sooner, but okay, turns out all right. And um, continuing to cycle cards with Gandalf is good. My opponent um, does have Denethor's Folly here, so they could just get rid of it. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna get rid of it. So they go after Dale and they get a hit and I don't. So that's nice. But Erebor is strong because I had Dane Ironfoot's guard and I managed to get the regular from Iron Hills into Erebor. So both of these both of these strongholds are gonna to be tough to take um, with, with this one army. They'll have to reinforce probably. All right, so my opponent besieges Woodland Realm and then um, gets the South Rons and Easterlings toward war, gets them all the way towards war, and then play hordes from the east and um, I think about using my second ring, uh, my second elven ring, because the fellowship hasn't moved at all, and I want to make progress every round. Um, so I use a ring, and uh, my opponent misses. I've made seven movements without getting caught, and they uh, group up their armies in East Hrun and Orthanc. All right, so I'm still only rolling four dice. I don't love that. Um, let's see what my opponent discards. They discard Worm Tongue. That makes a lot of sense. And I get rid of um, Axe and Bow because the Fellowship's doing great. I don't need to worry about uh, playing that. And it would get discarded by Worm of Sauron Toil anyway. Okay, now they allocate two eyes. I'm not sure why they're suddenly starting to allocate two eyes, but I don't really mind that. I feel like the Fellowship is doing well. So it'll slow down their military. I double check with them. Did you intend to potentially do that? And they say yes. Okay. So I am happy to maybe lose Gandalf now and bring him back. Um, and I move. And this time they hit me. And I'm very satisfied. I mean, their last die is the one that actually manages to uh, catch the Fellowship. So that's kind of cool. They, they, you know, intentionally allocated eyes. Shadow does have some control over it. Whether or not they really... Um, are going to start corrupting the Fellowship. I don't know, but that's cool. All right, so I get eight movement. I go to Osgiliath, and um, the, I have only um, one damage here because there's only one hit, but I need to figure out, is it worth it to... Um, is it worth it to lose Gandalf here or not? And the risk is, if I don't lose Gandalf to this one, the risk is that there could be an eye, any of these eyes, or any of these zeros. So there are five tiles that would allow, uh, would cause Gandalf to stay um, as guide because these would do zero damage going through Moria. Um, so I decide it's not worth the risk and I just lose Gandalf to the one. Uh, as it turns out, I then, um, I then draw uh, the three so that's not great. I realize the, let's see what's going on here. The chat is having problems. Okay. Um, so we, um, my opponent had forgotten Warm of Sorrow and Toil uh, for Gandalf. And technically after the second tile is drawn, you, um, it's in a, in a tournament game, it would be too late to then remember Warm of Sor Sorrow and Toil. And because it says, um, if a companion the Fellowship is taken as a casualty, you may also discard one of the three people's character cards. Um, it's not a mandatory effect, and therefore it's an optional effect, so Shadow has to remember. 
um, because this is a pretty friendly game, even though it's a league game. I reminded my opponent, and we just we just did it. We just did it now. Um, so you know, I obviously don't want to lose. What did I just lose? I just l lost. Um, the Eagles are coming and heroic death. I don't like to lose my cards, um, but that's the effect of Warren with sorrow and toil. So we play it. Okay. Um, and now. Uh, Okay, sorry, the second tile was a one, was just a regular one. So I took I took one corruption from that, not too bad. Now Strider is guide, um, and my opponent attacks into Fords of Aizen. I have another scouts, so I use the scouts, and um, Helm's Deep is nicely defended. My opponent, so this is interesting, my opponent put only, um, left a single regular in Orthanc. I guess then they can muster an elite in there if Gandalf shows up and I have an Ent. Um, I don't know, maybe leave two regulars in there because then when you muster a, an elite in there, you'll have four hit points, which is impossible for a single end card to defeat. Um, okay, clearly I'm going to make Gandalf show up and um, because I don't have end cards in my hand and because my opponent um, doesn't seem to be leaving much behind in Orthanc anyway, I decide to bring Gandalf into Woodland Realm. Remember that you can um, bring Gandalf back in any Elven Stronghold, even one under siege. So by bringing Gandalf into Woodland Realm, it's going to be really tough, I think, for Shadow to take it. I'm basically denying Shadow these two victory points in exchange for not getting to play end cards for their card effect. If I happen to draw any end cards, I can still use them for their combat effect. Um, and so that's that's my plan. I don't know. I'm curious to hear in the comments, would you have brought Gandalf into Fangorn to sort of threaten end cards even though you don't have any? Or do you just bring Gandalf to Woodland Realm? Um, maybe, maybe Lorien? Lorien would be risky um, with only two elites and a regular in there. Or would you choose Woodland Realm? So I chose Woodland Realm. All right. Um, my opponent now besieges Helm's Deep. I send the one regular back to... Um, the reinforcements because you can only have five units in there, but I'm happy with two leadership, two elites, and three regulars. You know, that's a decent decent job to defend Helm's Deep. Um, all right, I hide the fellowship in Osgiliath using a Palantir, and then um, my opponent brings some units into Erebor. They're mustering Nazgul. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess they're intending to move Nazgul around. Um, and what else could you muster? So yeah, makes sense. Um, and then my opponent moves Nazgul around, prepares to attack Helm's Deep, and gets some Nazgul all around Osgiliath, and um, has to cover both North and South Athelion, but they have enough Nazgul to do it, so that's great. Um, they, they also, they completely gave up on Woodland Realm, so that way to go, Gandalf. Um, and now, where am I mustering? Let's see. Uh, I play Kyrdin's ships now. Um, why? Well, I guess I could play Guards of the Citadel. Um, I think I'm a little more worried about um, if I'm a little more worried about Corsairs of Umbar. If next turn. I happen to roll no musters and no palantirs, then, uh, which is very unlikely, but you know, it can happen, um, then I'd rather just have Cairden ships ready for Dol Amroth. Um, you know, I can't really muster the North productively, I can't really muster the Elves productively, so I think it's between Guards of the Citadel or Cairden ships. So. I have, in terms of the Elven Force Pool, I only have um, one Elite and two Regulars, so I put in an Elite and one Regular. Okay, uh, then my opponent attacks into Helm's Deep, and uh, they roll a good number of sixes, they reduce, and uh, they manage to get me down to three Regulars and um, they still have a decent size army left. Um, Rohan is at war. I'm not exactly sure uh, what happened 
why we didn't why we didn't move them to war, so we just forgot about that. Um, my opponent allocates two eyes again. They roll two more and a whole bunch of musters. Um, and again, on five dice, I roll no movement. So, you know, there's randomness, and sometimes that happens. This is relatively unlikely, uh, I would say. Uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. One out of 32 chance of rolling no movement on five dice. Um, and I would have made it into Mordor this round if it if I could have. But I um, sometimes that happens. So uh, Rohan is at war, so at least I can do something useful uh, with the musters. And um, my opponent jokes that we could just re-roll. But... Uh, I think this is generally good for Shadow, uh, if if the Fellowship doesn't roll too many too much movement, it gives Shadow a chance to catch up a little bit militarily. Though I will say four musters is not is not useful. They do have rings, so they can use a ring. Um, okay, I start mustering into Western Net, and uh, they muster up using the voice. I muster more into Western Net. They upgrade or thank. I muster more into Western Net. I have three elites there now and um, get some regulars in Western Net, and uh, let's see, they move armies into Fords of Aizen. So I guess they were a little wary of attacking into, um, into Helm's Deep. I wonder why not? Try, you know, if you can try and finish that off, that might be worth it. Um, they get Corsairs of Umbar set up. I don't know, have they actually drawn Corsairs of Umbar? So they don't have Corsairs of Umbar in hand yet, but they're hoping to draw it. A little risky, but you know, that'll be nice if they manage to draw it. And I play Faramir's Rangers here because, uh, why? I don't know exactly what else to do. Maybe it makes more sense to play Guards of the Citadel. Um, Athalos I'm not playing yet because, um, because I only have one Corruption. And so I don't want to waste the healing effect of Athalos. I'm not playing Mithril Coat and Sting because Warm with Sorrow and Toil can get rid of it. You can use Warm with Sorrow and Toil to uh, discard one of the free people's character event cards from his hand, choosing it randomly, or from the table. So don't forget that. That's one of the powerful effects of Warm with Sorrow and Toil. You can get rid of character character events, not not something like Power Too Great. But if I had played Mithril Coat and Sting, then it, the first time I lose a companion, they can get rid of that instead of a card from a hand. So my plan basically at this point is move the fellowship, take some corruption, play at don't don't lose a random companion, then play Athalos, and then I can start losing random companions again. So Warm with Sorrow and Toil definitely is um, having some effect on my strategy here. Um, so maybe I could have drawn a card. I decide to play Faramir's Rangers. Okay. Um, one second. Okay, after all that. So, um, I don't know what I'm thinking. I thought I was going to play Faramir's Rangers, but I guess I think that doesn't make sense. I'll save it and play Mithril Coat and Sting, thinking maybe my opponent will forget the Worm with Sorrow and Toil can get rid of it. Um, or maybe, maybe what you can do, and, and this is this is a valid effect, um, which is what I'm thinking is, um, you can use it if you're going to get revealed and then just use it right then. So I guess I'm thinking militarily, uh, Asgiliath and Ms. Tirith are pretty solid uh, at the moment. And so um, I will play Mithril Coat and Sting. If nothing else, it'll protect a character card in my hand in the future if my opponent remembers it. So um, we'll see. All right, my opponent uses a ring and they play Candles of Corpses and get one hit. So they're trying to make some corruption progress maybe you know it's it's possible uh feels a little risky to me but they could do it we'll see all right house of stewards not so useful help on look for incredible top deck incredible top deck i can use this against uh the witch king in helm's deep so um yeah i have gotten some good top decks from the strategy deck this, this game. All right, my opponent allocates zero eyes after playing Candles of Corpses and then rolls three, so it bounces out. And then I get some movement and plenty of um, army musters, so this is a great roll. 
I want to use a uh, Will of the West right away because I don't want to have two at risk from Day Without Dawn. So even though I also want to play Help Unlooked For as soon as possible, um, I just can't risk losing two Wills of the West to Day Without Dawn. So I use one right away and I have to move because I want to get into uh, Mordor this round. My opponent hits me and gets a zero reveal because it's no damage. I'm not at risk from War of the Toil. So I just reveal and then Strider's going to use his ability and it's going to be great. I also would have been fine with Corruption because I have Athelos, also happy to play Athelos at some point. So my opponent gets a big army in Helm's Deep and um, leaves one regular one elite behind in Fords of Eisen. Not entirely sure um, why, but I guess to prevent this Westmnet going into Orthanc. Okay, um, now is my moment to play Help and Look For. They're about to attack into Helm's Deep. If I'm gonna play it, now's the time. So obviously I would like to have, I would have preferred to have more leadership. I would have preferred to have, um, you know, more, uh, more units in there, but it's not bad, seven hit points, and they're only gonna get to roll two dice. So I'm gonna start by rolling four, they're gonna roll two, they have two leadership, but I have stuff like charge, which I could play, um, and shield wall, which I could play. So, all right, um, we started off. Uh, I play charge, they cancel it. Obviously, very nice play there. You have the Witch King, you're gonna get to draw cards, so even on defense, so that's great. I get one hit, they get uh, two hits. So don't love that, but that's how it goes. And um, they get to, did we remember? Yeah, I, I have to remind them to draw a card. The Witch King card drawing ability is not optional. It does not say you may draw a card, it says you draw a card. So it is both players' responsibility to remember that. And if the shadow player forgets, free people must remind them or else you will be in violation of the rules just as much as the shadow player is in violation of the rules. Um, obviously, that I'm talking sort of in a very strict game, in a friendly game, who cares, but um, I'm sort of thinking in advance about tournament games. And this is a league game, which is sort of a step uh, up from sort of a normal, a normal game. Okay, um, so they draw Onslaught and um, they have Fighting Uruk High Onslaught and they have Orcs Multiplying again Onslaught. We'll see what they do. So uh, I don't play a card, they do play a card. They play Onslaught here and um, I get one hit, they get one hit back at me and then they decide to lose four hit points to do Onslaught. And you know, I think that's maybe a little overly aggressive. Um, Yes, you're only rolling two dice, but you have two leadership. Wait, well, you actually have seven leadership, but you have plenty of leadership. And so even though I'm rolling four dice and you're rolling two dice, we're probably trading, I think, relatively close to one for one. And and um, Onslaught is a trade of two for one. So I think that's a little, a little aggressive. Anyway, they get the average and... Um, they get two hits. So I'm down to two dice. At this point, I keep pressing because um, I'm rolling two, they're rolling two. I'm gonna inflict the damage that I can um, while I have help on look for. I'm just trying to keep Helm's Deep safe. So um, I, uh, they play their second onslaught here. I get two hits, obviously, way to go. We're here. My opponent gets one hit and then they choose to lose an elite and um, they that's it. So they win the combat. Um, they played Fighting Urkai. I feel like Fighting Urkai is quite a powerful effect. Um, it lets you do a very powerful attack as a um, with a Palantir. And even if you don't need to do it because you rolled a bunch of attacks, um, it still gives you a bunch of presses for free and prevents free people from playing a combat card round one, which particularly in Rohan, like you could have an end card and that can wreck shadow pretty badly. So um, I'm not sure that I would have played this onslaught also uh, in this combat. They do end up uh, winning and holding the siege. So that's good. Um, all right, so they uh, muster up an Orthanc again and 
I could consider attacking out of um, Helm's Deep into the Witch King, but that's pretty risky. If I had an end card, um, I would be much more likely to do that and try and take out the Witch King, but I've basically used up the Rohan Force pool. There are only two regulars left and two leaders, so um, I don't really want to weaken Rohan at this point anymore, so I decided not to do it. I hide with Strider, and then um, go ahead and move the Fellowship. They managed to hit me and draw three. So at this point, I'm happy to take the Corruption because I have Athelos and um, hope that they don't have Cruel Weather. They play Foul Thing from the Deep. Beautiful play. I think that's just a great thing. Um, you know, hoping to get a, a reveal here. You have four tiles that reveal the Fellowship, which would be great into the Stronghold. Um, and there are three ones, and ones are what you love to draw with Foul Thing because then they have to lose a random companion. You can easily get two, or if you get Strider, three uh, value worth of uh, corruption out of it. So I think that's a great play. Also, it combos with Worn with Sorrow and Toil because it does count as a random companion, uh, as a companion lost. So uh, this is a good setup. Oh, wow, and they have three, three red tiles that they're sitting on, so that's great. All right, they did uh, get a reveal, but they did not get a uh, random companion. So, but the reveal is good, and um, they reveal me into minus uh, Morgul, and then they get a one here. Um, this I don't need to take as a random companion, and so I take it as corruption, which obviously I'm getting a little high on corruption, and Isildur's Bane is still out, so I'm a little worried, but um, I know I have Athelos, so and a bunch of companions, so I, I think it'll be okay. All right, um, at this point, I play Faramir's Rangers. I could hide with the Fellowship, um, but I, um, I'm i worried about another card that would uh, reveal the Fellowship, and since Strider is still Guide, um, next round I can I can hide, and that's, that's fine. Okay, so... Um, and the Shadow Military obviously is not going particularly quickly. Though they do have three strongholds under siege. So, all right, the Shadow moves armies and um, gets on on they went into the pool. That's great. And then obviously at the start of next round, they'll be able to get, give it to us and bring his mine also in there. Okay, so Morgul Wound, good if they're going the Corruption Strategy. And um, I'm happy to see Thranduil's archers. I mean, Woodland Realm is super safe. And uh, yeah, I feel, I feel pretty solid about the Fellowship. We'll see. All right, so they allocated two eyes. I think that, um, I think that makes some sense if you're gonna try and corrupt, corrupt the Fellowship. And um, there aren't that many uh, non-eye tiles left. So, you know, I think that's, I think that's pretty good. All right, I get uh, some flexibility. I hide with a regular muster because I'm happy to use this Palantir to uh, draw cards or play cards like Athelos. So um, my opponent gets the ring as mine in. That's certainly good. And then um, I play Athelos with a um, character die because I want to use the Palantir to draw cards. So that's I think that's my thinking there and I get two, I heal two. That's what we'd expect from um, Athelos with Strider as guide. And uh, my opponent gets the mouth. Obviously good to remember the mouth once the fellowship is in Mordor. And I'm not going to rush it. I'm just going to go, you know, pretty slowly. Two and reveal. Um, I take a random here and we lose Mary. So this is not good for Worn with Sorrow and Toil. It will count towards uh, Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Um, and uh, there we go. I lose, I don't remember exactly what that card was. Let's look at discarded cards. Um, okay, I don't, I don't remember what, what that was a second ago, but let's, should we undo it? Okay, it's, it's blank, I don't know. Okay, well, so probably you can rewind the video, but uh, I, I can't remember. Okay, I don't think it was, particularly important. Um, hopefully not. Okay. 
All right, my opponent plays Morgul Wound here, does one, that's good. And um, I'm not sure, oh, I'm staying, I don't know exactly why I'm staying uh, revealed. Uh, I guess I'm not sure if I, yeah, I guess I, I wasn't, I want, oh, right. So I want to use the Palantir to draw a card and the muster to hide. But if my opponent attacks into Pilar gear, putting Gondor to war, then I want to be able to use the muster to muster another elite or a leader into Dol Amroth. And in that case, I would use the Palantir to hide. So I think, I think that's what's going on. I'm just passing a little bit, waiting for my opponent to uh, sort of commit to one option or another. So at this point, I draw my character card, happy to see heroic death. And um, then my opponent attacks Helm's Deep. And um, let's see what happens. My opponent gets one hit, I get two hits, and uh, let's see, they stop with me with two, two regulars left. Okay, and with that last uh, muster die, I hide the fellowship. So I made one progress and taking it slow. All right, my opponent um, is attacking. Where did they just attack? Okay, they just attacked uh, Asgiliath. All right, so Gondor is now one away from war and they're moving on to uh, Minas Tirith, I guess is their plan because they never ended up drawing Corsairs. All right, they have an Orc Patrol and um, now they allocate three eyes and um, you know, there are a lot of eyes. There are five eyes in this pool. So, you know, if you're not going a um, military strategy, then, I mean, if your military is going slowly and you're trying to corrupt the fellowship, then this is sort of, this is sort of the way to do it. Um, oh, I will note that Warwind Sorrow and Toil did trigger uh, and they we lost a card from my hand. So they didn't get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting. So I think with that 2R, I was happy with it, and therefore I didn't um, I didn't use Mithril Coat and Sting, and, and they got one from my hand. Maybe it was better for them to get one from my hand? I don't know. Mithril Coat and Sting is pretty powerful, so I probably would have chosen that. But All right, so they allocate three eyes. They roll two more, and I get one movement. So, you know, this is definitely a... Um, tricky situation for me. I draw a character card right away. Um, obviously healing one is good. And uh, my opponent moves armies around. I play it right away because that way I won't lose it to Warm of Sorrow and Toil. And uh, my opponent uses the mouth to it to besiege Minas Tirith. And um, they undo it. And then let's see, they muster an Orthanc. I move here and get hit by an eye. So, you know, five in a reveal is not good. And so I um, use Mithril Coat and Sting here. Also, maybe my opponent will start using Warren Rosar and Toil to get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting. So I'm happy to try and avoid a five reveal. Uh, and I get a one reveal instead, which is much more pleasant. Um, and I am thinking about taking Corruption here, but I know that Isildur's Bane is still out. So, um, I take a random and I get Bormir, and then we remember Warm with Sorrow and Toil, and I lose um, something again. I didn't see it, but I uh, don't think it was particularly particularly relevant. Okay, happy to have avoided a 5R, 5 in a reveal for a 1 reveal instead. All right, um, my opponent is attacking into Helm's Deep and plays Orc Patrol. Um, you know, they have a ring, and I wonder, maybe you could have used the ring to play Give It To Us to get that in the pool, because getting more reds in the pool is pretty great. Also, Orc Patrol, I guess there are a lot of eyes, so maybe that's why they're not why they're, they're not inclined to play Orc Patrol, but if you're going for a corruption strategy, it still could be worth it to, you know, any of these could be good. Yeah, not quite sure. All right, so they um, 
they managed to take out Helm's Deep there, and they draw Isildur's Bane. So Isildur's Bane is quite scary for me because uh, if I get anywhere close to high on corruption, they can they can do it. All right, so I hide, and then they besiege Erebor, and then I get Gondor to war so that they have to use their ring to besiege Gondor or else I'll be able to muster into Gondor at the beginning of the next round. So I'm very happy to see that ring gone and um, that's that. All right, I finally draw an Ent. It's too late because that battle in Helm's Deep is done and Gandalf is far away in Woodland Realm, so that card will not be so useful. Uh, my opponent finally draws Corsairs of Umbar and they allocate um, three eyes roll a fourth and um, I get a very flexible roll but I'm very wary of moving too fast with the fellowship given that there are a bunch of eyes in there but I have to at least move a bit so I try one and I get a two obviously that is a great draw for me um, I take a random one again uh, get another hobbit so this is sort of getting maximum value out of warm or and toil because I'm taking hobbits as random companions um, and I take one corruption and lose the House of Stewards. Also, neither of my character cards matter much. All right, um, my opponent now gets give it to us into the hunt pool. And um, you know, this, this hunt pool is looking super scary. These, are, these eyes are all five reveals and these are a bunch of stops and I have no blue tiles in here. So um, if I take a bunch of it's you know I do have seven corruption worth of companions in here but I can't necessarily spend them all at once I can only spend one at a time and I don't have any hobbits left so I could get pretty high on corruption all right I'm gonna just start drawing cards like crazy here because um, I want to try and get uh, you know various healing cards if I can um, okay my opponent continues to make some military progress. I muster a little bit in Edoras just to make it a little bothersome. And um, my opponent attacks. I go ahead and play Ent's Rage because, you know, I'm going to lose it at some point. And when else can I do it? So I add two to all my combat rolls. And um, my opponent gets zero hits and I get two hits. So kind of funny to be uh, making some progress against that. They move one regular in. And now I have like, the, the Rohan force pool is very low. I just have one regular and uh, two leaders. But you know, there aren't, there isn't that much here defending. There's, you know, one regular in Edoras and two regulars in West of Net. And then Helm's Deep is completely empty. So, um, you know, there could be something fun happening with, with that if I need it. But right now, military, Shadow Military is still going slow enough that I'm not in any real rush. Also, Power Too Great is still out. Um, you know, I wonder at some point they might want to get rid of it. Uh, obviously, Durin's Bane is great to take out Moria, maybe they're or to take out Lorien. So we'll see. All right, I keep drawing character cards, and there aren't that many that can help me, but you know, I might as well try. And um, then, let's see. My opponent moves Nazgul moves characters around. That's good. I pass. My opponent muster uh, uses the mouth ability to attack. They're attacking in Minas Tirith. And, um, you know, anytime you see Shadow using a strategy card, often, you know, that's going to increase their chances of hitting. And so if you have a card like Daylight or Advantageous Position, those can be quite good. So I want, I want Minas Tirith to try and survive as long as it can, so might as well play Daylight. Um, my opponent gets zero hits, a little unlucky, and I get three. So Gondor is doing well, and um, Shadow has to stop there. Um, so what's crazy about this situation is I have a single character die. I'm not in any huge rush with the Fellowship, and um, I have no n nothing nothing useful to move or play with uh, I have no companions on the map um, other than Gandalf who's stuck in Woodland Realm and 
like what do you do what do you do with this character die? I have one ring left I want to save it just in case I need it to move uh, the fellowship so I do nothing I just do nothing with that character die um, leave in the comments would you have done something with that character die would you have tried to um, I don't know I guess I can move some units out of Rivendell? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I could use my last ring, but it just didn't seem worth it to give Shadow a ring for that. Um, so I do nothing with it. I also, oh, the other thing I thought about was I thought about separating Gimli and, and or Legolas for no effect just to get, um, just to get um, Gollum sooner. But because... Um, there are so many red tiles in the pool, and the pool is so small. I think it's pretty likely that I could hit a red tile, um, and so I'm not. It's, I'm not just like two steps away. I'm probably like three steps away. Hopefully, just three, and not four steps away. Uh, so I'm sort of counting on getting a red tile, and therefore I'm just going to go slowly. I'm going to keep them in the fellowship, and. Um, try to try to whittle the fellowship down sooner but not risk taking five damage at once all right so um they muster because what else can they do with that they already used the mouth that round all right we're on round 11 this is a long game um i draw some more ents continue to get pretty useless character cards and um path of the woes is funny but not really going to help in this moment and my opponent allocates three eyes again and rolls two more. So I'm back in the same situation of five eyes. Obviously not great, but um, I do have a chance to maybe draw some, some more character cards. All right, so um, I start off by drawing a character card because I really don't care about um, Horn of Gondor. It's just a useless card. Can't possibly use it. Um, I end up getting rid of Guahir also useless basically um horn of gondor yeah the, i have pretty useless character cards okay um my opponent attacks minas tirith again and um i have advantageous position against desperate battle that's always pleasant and they get two hits i get four hits because i hit on a four and um they're having some trouble in minas tirith uh so um, I use a ring here to draw a card because I don't know exactly what else I can do that so that would be useful. I'm hoping to draw a playable character card. I've drawn no, have I drawn any blue tiles? I think I've drawn literally zero blue tiles. Have I discarded any? Um, I discarded Elven Rope earlier in the game, so... There are three blue tiles still left in this deck, um, which I'm trying to get to. Um, I think also Bilbo's Song might still be in there. Um, so there are some good cards in there, but I am not uh, drawing them. And then my opponent uh, draws a strategy, uh, sh a character card, sorry, uh, with, with their uh, Palantir. And um, then I go ahead and move because I have to move at least once per round and um, my opponent gets the red eye the ring is mine so you know that's awesome for them um, and you know they actually have devoted quite a few resources to hunting the fellowship so I, I feel like this is fair they've had that in from the beginning of the climb up Mordor and um, you know this sort of shows how much progress you can make against the fellowship um, even when you know I had eight movements before being revealed uh, and I started off with wizard staff so this is um, this is good progress all right so I have to I get stopped I get revealed I definitely lose strider here I don't want to take a random companion I want to I want strider to soak up all three corruption that he can and um, I have plenty of character movement because the shadow is moving slowly um, so I'm not worried about that um, alright so I get revealed on step 3 and um, 
I think I ask, are you, are we done? Do you want to remember uh, Warm with Sorrow and Toil? But we forget. But it doesn't matter really because all these character cards are pretty useless. Um, so that's fine. Um, okay, my opponent uses uh, the last ring to move armies and then I hide and then they attack Minas Tirith again. Corsairs of Umbar, Deadly Strife. Do they manage to take it? Uh, yes, they take it. All right, so they're down to two, two regulars in Minas Tirith, but they take it. And then I have another character die here, and I do nothing with it again. So I, have, I do not remember the last time I played a game as three people where I wasted even one die, and to have two dice that are completely unusable um, is impressive. So I just, I don't know what else I should do with that. I can't play any of my cards and I have no uh, desire to move against six, uh, possible six corruption damage. I mean, that would kill me. I would lose the game if I, if another eye comes up. Um, so I'm certainly not moving. Um, and what else can you do? So I waste the die, no action. Uh, my opponent uh, musters into Moria and uh, we go to next round. So now they can allocate only uh, two eyes, but they roll two more, and I get a very flexible roll. Smeagol helps Nice Master is good. Um, I play it first, um, and obviously I'm using Will of the West to avoid the possibility of Day Without Dawn, and I'm happy to get that into the pool. And then Day Without Dawn gets rid of my uh, Will of the West. I would have used that probably to just draw more character cards. I'm not gonna try and move twice uh, because I think that, um, I think Woodland Realm can hold out. I think Erebor can hold out. Um, and I think I can probably, if I need to, muster into Fold and then retake Edoras if I need to. Um, it's, a little, it's a little tricky, but I, I think it's unlikely that they can get uh, Edoras and, um, or sorry, Erebor and um, Lorien this round. So I feel like I still have another round to go. Another eye, not good. This is what I was afraid of with the fact that I lost random companions as hobbits as opposed to these level two companions. If I still had some hobbits left and I was taking four damage, I could do something like lose Legolas as the guide to soak up two damage then immediately a hobbit becomes guy. Like, let's say instead of Gimli, I had a hobbit. I could lose Legolas for his guide ability, soaking up two damage. And then the hobbit becomes guide, and I can immediately use the hobbit's guide ability, soaking up, uh, reducing the corruption by another one. And so, um, and if you had two hobbits, then you could do that twice. You can use as many guide abilities as you want on a, um, on a single tile. Uh, you can only lose one companion as a random companion. Or as a, or you know, just one companion total, either as a random companion or as um, losing the guide. Um, but the hobbits, when they become guides, have a guide ability that let them separate. So that's slight. That's just like a rules detail that you're you're using a guide ability, which is different than um, losing a companion. Even though it kind of feels uh, feels like you're also losing the hobbits, it's slightly different mechanic. Anyway. I lose Legolas and um, have to take two more corruption because it's four damage. So I'm at ten. I'm at ten damage right here, and um, you know I'm one away. But it's a scary. It's a scary situation. Um, if my opponent has something that punishes me for being revealed, um, they could. And Isildur's Bane. So if you play Isildur's Bane, probably makes sense to wait for me to hide. They get more. Um, they get their armies positioned, then I hide. And now this is a moment where if they draw the three, stop, the three, the three, or the two, they instantly win the game. Because um, Isildur's Bane says, you have to take it as corruption. You cannot lose a companion, right? This says, um, Follow the rules for a successful, if it's an I, ignore it, or a Fellowship Special Tile, ignore it. 
Otherwise, follow the rules for a successful hunt, except that hunt damage may not be reduced in any way before using the ring. And using the ring means taking corruption. So, um, if they play Isildur's Bane right now, they have a 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 10 chance. They have a 40% chance of winning the game instantly. Um, I think I would take that chance. 4 out, four out of 10 to win right now? I mean, yeah, it's not great if you draw a red tile. I mean, if you draw the one stop, it's not great. Um, it's not so bad. You get them, get me to one, uh, one away. All right. So, um, okay. Um, my opponent is thinking that I might move here, but I am definitely not going to move here unless I have to, unless my opponent is threatening to get to 10 victory points this round. I'm definitely happy to wait until next round so that hopefully there are fewer eyes in the pool. All right, they get rid of um, uh, Power to Great, and um, then they move the Witch King, and um, I now know for sure that they're not gonna get to 10 victory points. So I, I didn't exactly follow all of their moves. I wonder if there was a way to at least maybe try to get 10 victory points this round just to threaten the chance of it. I mean, I think Erebor is very hard to take uh, because I have, you know, quite a powerful army in there. Um, but it might be worth trying. Um, okay, so I go ahead and muster some, I muster a regular and fold and a regular and polar gear because what else can I do? I'm not gonna move unless I have to, move the fellowship unless I have to. And then, um, that we were talking about Warm or Sorrow and Toil, though it doesn't really matter with my character cards. So we do it very late, and that's fine with me. Okay. Um, they play Dreadful Spells in Lorien and get one hit. Okay. Um, so they still have Balrog. All right, they do have Lidless Eye, so um, I'm hoping that they draw... Um, well, that they roll very few eyes, right? So they can only put one eye in. And now I'm just hoping that as long as they roll two or fewer eyes, then the eye tiles will be safe for me. So they roll two eyes. And now this is the moment that I'm hoping for because they have, um, the eyes will do three damage. And so I can lose Gimli and um, then take one more corruption, putting me at 11. Uh, and manage to destroy the ring. So right now, the only things that stop me from destroying the ring are um, are the red tiles. And so even though I have um, File of Galadriel, I'm very worried about Isildur's Bane. It turned out my opponent had it and chose not to play it, or I don't know, just forgot about playing it. Um, but I want to move right now because if they drew Isildur's Bane, the, the benefit of playing File of Galadriel is not, is not worth it. So I just move and um, they draw two. So, you know, this, this, was, this was a really close game, actually, from a corruption standpoint. My opponent did a great job getting red tiles in. And, um, you know, I think, I think they were, I think it's worth taking the chance with Isildur's Bane to, to try and win the game. If I have a 40% chance of winning right there, that feels that feels worth it. Um, so that was the game. Um, Fellowship managed to make it, and and I think it's just a good lesson for um, Shadow being able to really put serious pressure on the Fellowship, even if they don't get um, they don't get corrupted very much on the way on the way to Mordor. Mordor can be Mordor can be pretty rough. Um, so I think they, I think they played pretty well. Um, there were a couple of inefficiencies. Um, and I think the lack of Isildur's Bane was, was really probably the, the biggest thing that I think could have been different, but, but otherwise, you know, I, yeah, it was a good, it was an interesting game. I feel, uh, happy that Woodland Realm survived. Gandalf was happy hanging out with the elves. Let's look at the statistics. So, um, what do we think about this? 
Um, in this in this game, I'm not sure what's going on with the bug, but I think these are actually the the shadow rolls. So slightly above average on sixes, but you know, fine. Um, pretty balanced, I guess. A little high on musters. So this is this is high on musters, which you don't really love um, in mid game. So that was a bit of a disadvantage. And I was obviously low, quite low on character dice, but because the uh, Shadow Military was going relatively slowly, I had the time that I needed. Um, 13 turns. All right, that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it, and have a good rest of the day.